All right, man, torture talk. 12 o'clock show, 12 o'clock show. 12 o'clock show. Yeah, man, look, man, look, man. Give y'all some lunch and all that good stuff. Maybe y'all uh, actually headed to work. Who knows? But look, man. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about boss man, D'Lo. He had said some things about Kendrick or he compared himself to Kendrick and people was talking about him and he had to say something about it. So look, man, we're going to get to that. Before I get into it, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk, the Malcolm X edition. No, I'm just joking. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please subscribe me if you're new here. Let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen. Cash app, PayPal is in the description. They called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000 subscribers. And I'm going to be a million by Monday. Let me know where you're from. Yeah, that's the whole thing. So look, uh, I just want to take this time out real quick to thank everybody for all the the comments, the likes, the donations, everything. I really appreciate y'all. Excuse my wrinkle hat. Actually, I could do use a donation to get a new hat. Uh, no, I'm just joking. But um, yeah. So if you want to support the channel, do whatever you can. Even if you share the video, watch the video, support the video. It, whatever you can do, you know what I'm saying? I'm with it. Thank you so much for everything. I have to constantly thank y'all because y'all the shit. So, not in a bad way, in a good way. Y'all know what I'm saying. All right, look, man. So, let's get to it. All right, so let's go. <laughs> back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Hope everybody doing good out there. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about about Florida rapper boss man D-Lo okay now I just told y'all the other day uh he was featured on Glorilla's album Glorious um and I told y'all I liked the record that he was on but I did not like his verse it seems that there's quite a few people out there on the internet that feel the exact same way that I did with that particular song so much so that somebody came out and hit boss man D-Lo Directly and told him he need to switch up his mother effing style. Need to switch his flow. Need to switch it up. Is that not what I said the other day? I just was talking about this, man. And I'm so glad that we live in a time where you can say this to an artist. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the troll. I don't like the trolling. I don't like like the disrespect and stuff that goes into this. But an artist like Boss Man D-Lo... He's been around for a while. You know, what I'm you know what I'm saying? Trying to get on. He took off with a particular style about a year ago. And for the entire last year, he's been trying to basically recreate the same ass song, same ass vibe, same ass flow, same ass cadence. And it's like, bruh, do you have nothing else up your trick bag? Because you didn't even sound like this when you was trying to get on before. So we know that you could rap another way. Uh, that's called being lazy and having a search, have a fan base that like you see people, some artists, they, they already got themselves. If they make, let's say an artist makes $20,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand, 200,000. They already make a certain amount of money. They feel like they rich. They feel like they don't have to do nothing else. The, the Their work ethic starts to go down and they just revert back to something that's easy, not complex and something that they think is catchy and that people are going to like right away. You know what I'm saying? Now, I never, um, I heard, I've heard, I think I heard one or two songs from him. I believe that that was him that I heard. Some people have this, just this, this aura about them. And then some people are just, they just figured out a flow or a way to go about something and they just stick to that. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. And I think that from what I heard from boss man, D-Lo, I can just tell, cause I, I can, I can, I can hear when I hear people rap, I can hear their writing level. I can hear 
how 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 good they can write if that makes sense like i can hear it if if i hear something from them and they're using certain words wrongly and um just different different ways they're going about uh putting metaphors together i can tell that they're really not a good writer you know what i'm saying so obviously they're going to do whatever it takes to just be as simple as possible or they're going to stick to what they believe they know. And this is the reason why a lot of rappers like Boss Man D-Lo, a lot of rappers who are really not super lyrical when they do something that is a little bit out of the norm, everybody thinks it's so fire because he had to put a lot of time into that. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it's somebody like Lupe, you expect him to already be super lyrical or super nice. But somebody like Boss Man D-Lo, he says one punchline, that's pretty good. You will say, oh, he was fire because y'all give guys like him the grace. You know what I'm saying? And I understand that there's a lot of dudes that are super lyrical and they are on a certain plateau when it comes to rapping. But hip hop to me is, it's, it's so, a lot of fans are so biased when it comes to certain people. And I believe that this is where uh, Boss Mandilo comes in. Because if you go back and look at Boss Man D-Lo's style, I've done it on my channel before. He raps almost nothing like how he does today. So he knows he can do other things. However, Boss Man D-Lo took severe offense to this person reaching out to him. Let me go ahead and just pull up the screenshot so that y'all can see what it is I'm talking about. And it led to him doing a Kendrick Lamar impression saying, what the fuck you want me to do? Rap like this? But you know you don't fucked up. It's like, bro, why my my thing is like, like, why are you even mentioning Kendrick Lamar? Why are you even mentioning Kendrick? It's like, why are you even mentioning Kendrick Lamar, bro? It's like, and I know, and I don't think he mentioned Kendrick, but. Obviously, if I know what he's talking about, maybe it, and what he's about to say, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, I don't know. But we know what he's talking about. But why? But why? Why? Like, why? That just goes to show you the level of jealousy that people have. Even if it, even for Drake, right? There's some people who have jealousy for Drake. I ain't going to lie. There's a lot of people who have jealousy for Drake. But for good reason, though. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people look at him as he's not as good as they as he say he is or people say he is i can understand why people would be jealous of his position but then you got somebody like boss mandilo who is jealous of kendrick or saying they oh you should i rap like would you expect me to rap like this and it's like no we don't expect you to rap like that we expect you to do something different from that you know what i'm saying a lot of people don't understand that 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 tells me that you look at Kendrick on a higher level than you because you saying you expect me to rap like this. It's like, come on, bro. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? These dudes, these dudes be hating for no reason. Like for real. Or they have their reasons and it's just stupid. All right. So who is this big ex baller? They say, hey, my man's boss man Dilo. Why all your music sound the same? Why you get on Glorilla track and it sound like you merge your damn song? Get it together, please. God damn. I love you, though, but switch it up, please. And thank you. I stand 25 toes down on this motherfucking message. I approve it like a goddamn presidential campaign propaganda mix. Yes. Challenge these niggas, man. These new hip hop artists. Yo, and then, you know what's crazy? How fans can, can suggest certain things to certain artists. And he's basically saying he like, like, this, and I don't take this message as disrespect. I take this message as a genuine message telling him, bro, switch it up a little bit. You've been saying, you're doing the same thing. Like, just switch it up. Now, for some artists, they don't care about what the fans say. You know what I mean? But this seems like a genuine message, I think, is it that is being displayed here. And I just think he just didn't like that. I think he didn't, I think he probably looked at that like, man, get the out of here. You crazy? Are you crazy telling me what I need to do? I'm I'm boss man. D. I'm where I'm at today. You ain't where I'm at. How you gonna tell me what to do? I got here cause I got here. You crazy? Propaganda mix. Yes. 
challenge these niggas, man. These new hip hop artists, nothing against them. Not from me anyway. Not the greatest of hip hop artists we've ever seen, but I don't have nothing against them. But what I do expect is for you to be able to show some variety. If you listen to artists like Jay-Z, uh, Busta Rhymes, people that have stood the test of time over the years, they have always told you that the key to longevity is being able to adapt, evolve, right? Now, there's two things there that uh, I can say I agree with and some of the I disagree with. Adapting and evolving is two different things. I think that a lot of artists like Drake can adapt, you know what I'm saying? But he hasn't evolved. So I think evolve when you evolve, that is you becoming the artist that you are real that you are. You know, like Kendrick has evolved. He didn't adapt. He evolved. Drake evolved uh, adapt. And being being adapting to things or adaptation to things sometimes can actually hurt you because you could get stuck in that evolving is you're moving past whatever you believe or whatever you see people doing i'll give you another perfect example the weekend the weekend has evolved he hasn't adapted he does things that are current but he hasn't adapted if you listen to his albums they don't sound now it's, it's weird with the weekend because his albums are sound like something from the past, but evolving doesn't necessarily mean that you are moving forward. It could be that you will bring in something back, but everybody else isn't doing it. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. And that's what he went at with it. Even though not, not all his music, but some of his music sound like the eighties and a good portion, but he has his own style in a way, but that's evolving. That's evolving. Drake hasn't evolved, and I could tell you that this is what he means. This is what he means about Boss Mandilo. He hasn't evolved. Now, in this era of microwave music, you have to adapt or evolve fast. You have to evolve or adapt fast. If you just keep doing the same thing for two months or three months or in a year, I'll say a year, keep doing the same like Ice Spice, Ice Spice won't be popular next year. You know what I'm saying? Because... If she doesn't do anything that's radical or something different, she's going to be fall right by the wayside because people get tired of you real quick. It's they call instant gratification. They want it right, right now. And if they don't get it right now, then yeah, you're out of here. You got to adapt and evolve even after your first year. You can't do the same shit in year two you did in year one or else you're going to get called out the same way. But... Boss Mandilo comes back and says, y'all tell me to switch it up. I'm trying to figure it out. Excuse me. I'm trying to figure out. Like, I thought everybody had their own sound. What y'all want me to bust out and rap like Kendrick Lamar? Dumbass. Now. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, what's the point of you saying Kendrick's name, bro? What was the point of that? He, he, the man didn't say that you need to rap like Kendrick. He's telling you in the scope of what you do, you need to switch it up. He's not saying you need to rap like somebody else. And this just goes to show you how people don't have an identity. You, you, you saying, would you want me to rap like somebody else? Switching it up doesn't mean you need to rap like somebody else. Switching it up means that you need to switch it up and do something that you think is different. Do a different flow that you create or something that you you know, manifest into or something. I don't know. But for you to sit here and say, would you want me to rap like Kendrick Lamar? That just lets me know that you probably didn't even make your own style up. You probably got it from somebody else. Probably that people don't know about. I think you should have used a better uh, example, sir. Why you couldn't use 3K? Somebody from the South. Because you're a Southern rapper. I don't expect you to rap like Kendrick Lamar. Don't think you have the ability to rap like a Kendrick Lamar. Don't think you would ever probably be a, someone to collab with a Kendrick Lamar, if I'm being all the way real. But all that set aside, why you couldn't use 3K, three stacks? Big boy. There's so many uh, PMC, Bun B, 8 Ball MJG. I don't think they from. I don't know if uh, Pimp C and 
If he from Florida, I don't think that they're from Florida. I think they're from uh, Texas. I believe they're from Texas. Houston. Outside of Houston. I don't know about M- M- A-Ball MJG. I believe they're from, I believe they're from Atlanta. I'm not sure. Or Texas. Or maybe they're from Florida. I don't know where they're from. But I do know that that uh, Outcast is from Atlanta, obviously. And if this guy's from Florida, if he's saying the South, then I don't know. Maybe the South can go from Texas all the way to Florida all the way up to Atlanta. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Kodak Black from 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 fucking Florida. Boozy. Webby. Wayne. The hot boys. The niggas you got your beat style from. There's so many different rappers. You could have went to Detroit. You could have went anywhere in the world. Why would you choose Kendrick Lamar? You know? And this has been an... To be fair, he's, he's only using Kendrick because Kendrick is... Kendrick is the, the talk of the town right now. He's the name. He's the guy. So he's saying they switch it up. Be like more like Kendrick because Kendrick is the leader of rap right now. He is what every artist in the game is. I'm gonna say inspired to be, but they wish they were because they 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 don't inspire to be Kendrick because they can't be him. They wish they were in his position, but most of them can't even handle it because what position really is Kendrick in? Kendrick hasn't said anything. He doesn't do anything. He just does music. And he don't really brag about nothing. He don't come out and say nothing. He just let his music speak for it. Most rappers could never do that. They could never let their music speak for them. Never. They have to go online. They have to post pictures. They have to post what they're eating. They have to post their feet, you know, their girlfriend's feet. They have to post them in Turk and Kinko's. They have to post some girl that they dance with in a club. They have to post them drinking. They have to post everything, everything, even dropping their location. And some of them drop their location and, you already know what happened, so I'm just saying, man. It's just crazy. Ongoing thing in hip hop. Let me take this off the screen. It's been an ongoing thing in hip hop for many years now. Um, before 2024, where Kendrick became grand champ of hip hop, he was always revered. Make no mistake. But grand champ of hip hop, there was once upon a time when the so-called street rappers even though they weren't measuring up to the success of Kendrick Lamar, the so-called street rappers were calling themselves looking down upon Kendrick Lamar, not the, not the street rappers from the West coast. But remember when we had like Troy Ave come out and say that Kendrick Lamar was a weirdo. Meek Mill at one point even said that he, he kind of considers uh, Kendrick Lamar, you know, a backpack type rapper, but we don't really listen to that in the street. It's like what cracks me up about these dudes. Is most of these dudes are, most of these dudes are pussies. You know what I'm saying? They not really like that. But they always talk about how Kendrick is not this, Kendrick is not that, he's not street, or he's a weirdo. And these dudes don't even know Kendrick. They don't even know him. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes me so mad with people that say stuff like that. Most of these dudes are trash. They're pussies. They can't fight. They they have to surround themselves with niggas who could do all this stuff for them. They can't even hold their hands right. You know what I'm saying? But that's what cracks me up. That really does. So when I heard, I remember Troy Ave saying that. I was like, who are you to say something about Kendrick, bro? Who are you? You don't have no classic records. Nothing. You have nothing. Who are you? And then Meek Mill, bro. Come on, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it to me, it's like, stop speaking on a man's name. Like, y'all just need to just, when it comes to Kendrick, just stay away from that dude. Just stay away. Don't speak on his name. Just let him do whatever. Just let him do whatever. And I understand why people are so upset with him, though. I do. Because he is so good that they can't catch him. And they're mad about it because he is consuming everything from the from the awards to the airtime to everything. And the reason why he is because he is doing hip hop and y'all not. That's it. He's sticking to the formula. Y'all forgot it. Y'all forgot to how to how to y'all forgot in the lab. Y'all, you know, you gotta be in the lab to get to the formula, you know, create um, cook up some things in the lab. He's in the lab cooking right now. Y'all out here on Instagram. That's the problem. That's the problem with a lot of you rappers. Y'all always talking about Kendrick, but he's working and y'all not. Y'all not doing nothing 
This is the reason why y'all where you're at. That's why y'all don't do nothing. That's why this man takes he takes years off and makes music. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't y'all don't do that. Y'all try to drop a mixtape every week. And it's the same music. It's crazy. Type shit. Even though they had already collabed and did music together, that was something that he had put out saying, you know, yeah, I look at Kendrick Lamar like, you know, backpack rap. That's some other shit. Street niggas don't really bump that. I think this is a reiteration of that same type of mentality coming from Boss Man D'Lo. And I think there's um, a little bit of a point to it because niggas selling dope and shit might not really be trying to hear that. They want to listen to Jeezy. They want to listen to, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the new version of that is. But when you use Kendrick as a stepping stone to get a backhanded point off, that's not the way to go, especially not today. Not in 2024, man. It's already been. A nah, you definitely don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to use Kendrick as some type of stepping stone because you will be turned into a song. And a lot of y'all rappers be, y'all be really feeling yourselves until y'all come across somebody that y'all can't do nothing with. And y'all could talk all this, y'all could talk all that. And it's like, eventually you're going to apologize. You're going to say, yo, my bad. I really wasn't coming at Kendrick like that. It was just that I just said that because he's the most popular person right now. So I was just putting that out there. Like, what you wanted me to rap like him? Like, I ain't rapping like him. He got his own style. He good where he at, but I ain't going to be. It's like, no, dog, that's not what you meant. He was basically saying, like, you corny, and if you want me to rap like him, it's corny. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what you were saying. Come on. Established. Man. Shit, man. The new Kendrick fans don't fuck with me. And I'm way more hip hop than Boss Man D Lo. So, uh, y'all might want to chill, Mr. Boss Man. Cause shit could get a little hectic out this bit, man. You think you you think you up to date? Woo! Don't fuck with him. Don't fuck with him. Especially if he turn you into a song. I don't want him to. Hopefully, you know, hopefully this don't really get on his radar. Hopefully he'll he'll never have to, you know, respond to this shit. Don't want to see it. But I don't I don't I highly doubt that Kendrick Lamar would respond to boss man D Lo. <laughs> like, nah. I think I think these dudes they, 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 I think this was a shot, but it was more like just a, just a, just a, like a, 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 you know, when the boss lead a room, you like, like that's what that was. When the boss lead a room, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and the boss come back in, you're like, oh, oh what you say? I ain't say nothing. Oh, oh, I was saying, I was saying, um, I was acting with time, uh, time you want me to start work. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's the type of energy I'm looking at this. I don't think that that was anything serious, but let's keep going. Just think you should have picked a better example. You should have picked a more relevant example, as a matter of fact. But again, all the people are asking you for is to evolve with your style, right? Cardi B is is known as somebody who doesn't necessarily have, um, you know, she's not going to come in here rapping about the sun, moon, and the stars, right? People don't fuck with Cardi, some people, because she got writers that help her or whatever. But what Cardi does, she knows what people fuck with her for, but then she goes out and she takes chances. She'll get on some shit and do her thing. She's tried singing. She's tried a whole bunch of other shit. She has a few different flows that she can that she can switch between. You get on every song. and I woke up this morning. I got toenails in my shit. Man, fuck out of here. It sounds like you asking yourself a question and then answering the shit immediately. Niggas, niggas let you get away with that shit because you had some catchy shit at first. But boy. It's about time you stop doing <laughs> goddamn Q&A ass raps. <laughs> How much money I made this morning? I think about 50 G's. How many times I went to the, to the strip club? About 150 times. What, nigga? <laughs> Damn. Yo, going to the strip club 150 times is out of control. <laughs> Damn, 150 times? <laughs> when? When? In two years? 
Yo, bro, listen, if you go to the strip club 150 times, bro, you might as well just, you might as well just, you might as well just order yourself a chick, bro. You might as well order a chick. I'm telling you now, if you go to the strip club that many times, you might as well order a chick, bro, and keep her. You might as well buy one of them chicks right up out of there. Because you spending money, you spending money. But, uh, let's keep it going. Fuck out of here. <laughs> and I say this, this ain't no, this ain't no diss. This is like when Nas challenged the rap game, right? When he said, Nori, step your rap game up. Cam, step your rap game up. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no diss. But at a certain point, the field just gets a little bit convoluted and it's like, ah, the monotony is just disgusting. We gotta, we gotta find something else. And you gotta evolve. The baby went through it. Nigga said, man, the baby raps the same way on every song. Nigga flay with me, I bust. It's like, hey, nigga. That beat didn't call for that flow. <laughs> Yo, that is funny as hell. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Was the drip club a hundred times? Spent about 50 G's. <laughs> Damn. Ah, oh, man. But you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and play this guy, uh, Boss Man D-Lo, doing his Kendrick Lamar impression. Like, oh, boy. Why? Lyrical, spherical, I get very lyrical, typical, lyrical, and everybody hearing the searing it and nearing it. Nobody fearing me, leering me. And my son, I got on I got it. I pop a knot of it, and it's sorry, pop a rise it. Yeah, that's how you want me to rap, you stupid motherfucker. You got a nerve to do all that. <laughs> Didn't say, <laughs> call somebody stupid. How the hell did you rap stupid, but then call somebody stupid? <laughs> Bruh, you were saying words that didn't even, there was no words. Super miracle, lyrical, miracle. And my thing is, okay, what if the what if somebody did want you to rap like that? What's wrong with rapping like that? I mean, obviously it got them to uh, let's be honest here. All the rappers that are successful are lyrical. Every one of them that are successful, that are on the top, are lyrical. So when you say stuff like you want me to rap like this? Get the fuck up. I can never do. Oh, lyrical, miracle, miracle, miracle. You picking on lyrical rappers, but every one of them are on top. Everyone. We can go from Kendrick. You can use Drake because, you know what I mean? In the, in the context of an argument, he's lyrical. Even though other people write it, but he's lyrical. So we just say Drake. J. Cole, Eminem, Jay-Z, Nas. Yeah. We even go to Rick Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Lupe. Yeah. Royce the Five Nine. Yeah. These are all lyrical rappers who are very successful. Tyler the Creator. Yeah. So for you to say you want me to rap like that, and then say somebody's dumb. That doesn't make sense. These guys rap like that and they're more successful than you. I don't understand it. And, and on top of that, it stood the test of time. They've been, they've been rapping like that for years and they still successful. <laughs> so obviously what you're doing isn't working or it's not going to work. You're going to be a flash in the pan. That's it. You are an illusion. Here we are, man. 
ain't nobody asking you to be super lyrical. Ain't nobody asking you to do uh, complex rhyme patterns. Nobody's asking you to do fucking multisyllabic patterns and shit like that. Niggas just want you to not have that same ass Q&A flow. If that's too much to ask for, then go ahead and send in your 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 uh papers of resignation to your label. Because if you're going to think if you think you're going to just keep recreating that same thing and you're going to continue to be successful and make money and do what you want and have a great life, then you're going to be in for a rude awakening. And that's not just for Boss Mandilo. That's for a lot of the artists that came in during your era that think that's what it is. Just being a one trick pony is going to propel you to success. That's 100 percent fact. That's facts. You have to be willing to push the envelope and go to the next level. If you think that you're always going to be where you're at, you're going to be comfortable, you're going to do exactly what Drake did. Now, Drake, he was successful to a certain point. He got all these deals. He was on fire for a long time. But once he got to a certain album, he capped out. and He couldn't do nothing else that was great. So from there, he just, he, he either, his trajectory started going down. He started coasting downward. He wasn't, so now, even now, his music isn't as uh, impactful as it was before. See, Kendrick Lamar is different. He started going up where his trends started going, trajectories start going up. This is the reason why he comes out with albums once in a while, but these albums are groundbreaking or something that you can hold on to for two, three years. You know what I'm saying? So you have to understand. So when you don't work towards a goal like that, boss man, d you're going to always be on this, like a hamster on a wheel. That's all you're going to be chasing the cheese. And that, that, that metaphor actually is very good for most of these rappers, because that's what they are. They're just hamsters on a wheel chasing the money. That's it. That's all they're doing. They're trying to reach that money. When you got people like Kendrick who don't get on the wheel at all, or he gets off the wheel, um, other artists, they somehow jump and they grab the cheese and they got it. But these most artists, they just keep rotating and try to get to that cheese and they can't get it. You know what I'm saying? And you would think that, in that metaphor that these these people would learn more because the whole idea of the hamster on the, on the wheel chasing the cheese is to build strength at least from what I, my perspective to build strength because if you're constantly running on something to try to chase something and you never get it you're supposed to learn from that and actually get it um actually become a better person i know that that metaphor might not mean that but not metaphor, but that whole reason for that might not mean that, but the way I'm looking at it is you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. And if you constantly keep doing this and you can't, and you can't reach that goal, then maybe you need to get off of that and do something else. But it is what it is. Let's keep it. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's broken, brother. It's broken. That's why the fans are saying, Hey man, this was good while it lasted. What's next? Evolve. Are you not a student of hip hop? Why are you in hip hop if you ain't a student of hip hop? Right? Everybody has evolved. The way 3K rap, the last time you heard him was not the way he came in necessarily rapping uh, in fucking 93. It's similar, but it ain't the same. He evolved. He went to, I mean, nigga made Hey Ya. You know what I'm saying? The prototype. Nigga went out and did a lot of different shit. Mm -hmm. Don't pull the thing out unless you plan the bang. Bombs over Baghdad don't sound like motherfucking, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, uh, the, the Christmas shit. Yeah, and another thing I want to point out too. When you got rappers who, like, they destined to be great or they want to be great, like 3K, they push for that. You know what I'm saying? They push to be different. They dare to be different. They want to be different. They don't get comfortable in their spot. I think that's what both Mandilo got. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to let him finish this out, and then we're going to come back. He did. Players ball. You know what I'm saying? Even with fucking UGK, Pimp C is not the most, uh, you know, lyrical, spherical, miracle person out there he had a distinct style distinct voice but there was an evolution of a pimp c style over time 
Yeah, so let's end it there. Y'all can watch the rest on his channel. You know what I'm saying? I'll, of course, I'm going to put the link in the description and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing, man. I think a lot of rappers are, they're scared of evolution. They're scared of, of, of uh, moving forward. I think once they get to a certain space and they're comfortable where they're at, then it was like, like everything has some type of evolution to it video games to you know to any and everything you could think of a lot of it has evolution and they move forward i think that a lot of rappers need to learn from certain entities you know you buy that phone every year and it's supposed to have new technology in it that's how your style should be you should upgrade your style every time none of your albums should sound similar none of them i don't care if you have to take two three years you should try to try something Cause you might try something and you might not like it. People might like it or you might love it. You know what I'm saying? Or you might not like it at first, but you got to try something different. And that's where it's at. So, Hey man, let me, let me know what y'all think, man. Post your comments in the air. Of course y'all going to do that. And, um, yeah, y'all have yourself a good afternoon. Six o'clock show coming up, man. Love y'all. See y'all. Peace. Bye. <laughs>